जय हिंद स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल स्टूडेंट्स लव लाइफ ऑलवेज द ग्रेटफुल फॉर द लाइफ विच इज द मोस्ट प्रीशियस गिफ्ट बिस्टोर्ड ऑन अस बाई द ऑल माइंड एंड वी ऑल नीड टू शो अवर ग्रैटिट्यूड बाई नॉट शाइन अवे फ्रॉम इट्स चैलेंजेस सो स्टूडेंट्स विद दैट नोट लेट्स बिगिन टूडे सेशन today we are going to discuss some numericals based on circular motion and these are the numericals which are based on net acceleration centripetal acceleration tangential acceleration angular speed angular velocity the topics which we have discussed in the previous two lectures right so let's start with the first question then. okay students the first question is a cyclist is riding with a speed of 27 km per hour as he approaches a circular turn on the road of radius 80 m he applies brakes and reduces his speed at a constant acceleration of 0.5 m per second square right we are supposed to find out the magnitude as well as the direction of the net acceleration of the cyclist on the circular turn right so this is the circular turn suppose so since it's the case of a circular turn therefore the body must be having centripetal acceleration it is only due to the centripetal acceleration that the body is able to execute the circular turn right and as we have discussed if o is the center of the circular turn and the body is moving along this direction then the centripetal acceleration is also known as radial acceleration so it must be always acting along the radius towards the center so this is the first type of acceleration which is the centripetal acceleration which is also known as the radial acceleration acting always along the radius directed inwards towards the center right and another very important thing to be noted is that as he approaches a circular turn he applies brakes and reduces his speed at a constant rate of 0.5 m per second square Obviously, during circular turn, one needs to reduce the speed, so one applies brake. So the cyclist decreases his speed at a constant rate of 0.5 meter per second square. This is the acceleration which results in the decrease in the magnitude of the velocity of this cycle. So this acceleration, which do not produce any change in the direction of motion of the body, but instead induces a change in the magnitude of velocity of the body so this acceleration is known as tangential acceleration clear students and it acts tangentially in this case it will act in a direction opposite to which the body is moving because it is the case of retardation the speed gets reduced so the body is moving along this direction this is the direction of the velocity is draw a tangent over here so the tangential acceleration would be along this direction this is the tangential acceleration so what is the angle between radial acceleration and the tangential acceleration that's 90 degree so what about the net acceleration then net acceleration would be obviously in magnitude given by centripetal acceleration square plus tangential acceleration square and the square root of this entire term right these two vectors being perpendicular the resultant would be given by square root of a square plus b square so you can draw a perpendicular or rather you can complete the parallelogram right this is a parallelogram both sides are equal so this is the resultant this is the resultant this is a net okay let's find out the magnitude of the resultant acceleration and then we will find its direction as well right okay for this we need to have ac and at at the tangential acceleration it is given to be 0.5 meter per second square now let's find out ac centripetal acceleration as you are aware it's b square by r isn't it so the speed of the vehicle is 27 km per hour let's try to convert it in meter per second so v is 27 km per hour so it would be 5 by 18 Multiplied by 518 meter per second, so 9392. So it will be 15 by 2. So that will be 7.5 meter per second. 
right? And so when the centripetal acceleration is v square by r, that is 7.5 square divided by radius. Radius is given to be 80. Placements, okay. Let's try to solve it. 7.5 multiplied by 7.5 divided by 80. It can be written in this manner as well, right? It can be written in this manner as well. Understood? So, students, it is about 5, 6, 2, 5. Actually, 35 multiplied by 35. It's exactly 5, 6, 2, 5 divided by 8000. So, it would be equal to 5.625 divided by 8. Now, 8, 7, it's 56. So, it is about approximately 0.7 meter per second square. Clear students? Okay, let's substitute the value of AT and AC over here. What we get is A net, it will be equal to square root of AC square, that is 0.7 whole square plus 0.5 whole square. What we get is 0.49 plus 0.25. That will give us 0 0.74. Right? Now, students, uh, just make use of uh, common sense, right? So, 8 square, it's 64. 9 square, it's 81. So, 0 0.74, it somewhere lies between 0 0.8 square and 0 0.9 square. So, it is about 0 0.86. So, this is the magnitude of the net acceleration, right? This is the magnitude of the net acceleration. Now, let's find its direction. What we do is, suppose it makes an angle theta with the tangential acceleration. Look, theta is the angle which the net acceleration makes with the tangential acceleration. Now, this is a right angle triangle, isn't it? This is a right angle triangle. And this is a parallelogram. The entire figure is a parallelogram. In parallelogram, the opposite sides are equal, so it is also AC. Now, what to do is in this right angle triangle, consider tan theta. Tan theta would be perpendicular by base, that is AC divided by AT. Now, students, AC it's 0.7 and AT it is 0.5. So, point point get cancelled. So, theta would be equal to tan inverse 7 by 5. So, this will give the direction of the resultant acceleration. Theta, remember, we have considered theta to be the angle which the resultant acceleration makes with the tangential acceleration. So, that's the complete solution. This will give the magnitude and this will give us the direction. Right? So, this was a very very good question indeed. Let's proceed to the second question, which is relatively very very simple based on direct formula actually. So, second question is, a wheel is 0.6 meter in radius and it is moving with a speed of 10 meter per second. Find the angular speed. We need to determine the angular speed. It's very simple actually. This question is based on the direct formula. So, a wheel is 0.6 meter in radius. Let's write down the given information. Radius is 0.6 meter. It is 0.6 meter. And we are also given its speed, right? So, Radius is 0 0.6 meter and the speed is, this is the linear speed obviously, 10 meter per second. We need to find out the angular speed. Students, simply what we need to do is, we need to determine the relationship between these three, right? How the linear velocity and the angular velocity are related? The relation is V equals to omega r. This is the relationship to be used over here, right? 
So, angular speed would be equal to V by R. So, V is 10, it's SI, R is 0 0.6. So, that will give us 100 divided by 6. Right? So, it will be 16.67. And what's the SI unit of angular speed? It is radian per second. Right? So, unit would be radian per second. So, that's the solution of question number 2. Based on that formula, V equals to omega R. Right? Okay, let's proceed to question number 3 then. An aircraft executes a horizontal loop of radius 1 km with a steady speed of 900 km per hour. Compare its centripetal acceleration with the acceleration due to gravity. Compare means we are supposed to find out the ratio. So, what's the given information radius? It's 1 kilometer. Let's convert it in SI. It will be equal to 1000 meters. And what is the speed, constant speed? It is 900 kilometer per hour. It will be equal to 900 into 5 by 18 meter per second. So, that will give us 18, 5, 90. So, 15 into 5, that is 250 meter per second. Right? So, let's find out its centripetal acceleration. We know that centripetal acceleration is given by V square divided by R. Isn't it? So, V, we are aware of its value 250 square. So, 250 into 250 divided by radius, it's 1000. So, 0, 0, 0, 0 get cancelled. So, what do you get this? 625 divided by 10, isn't it? 625 divided by 10, so that will give us 62.5 meter per second square. So students, this is the centripetal acceleration and this is the acceleration which will make the body to move along a circular path. Right? It acts in the radial inward direction and centripetal acceleration students always remember it is also known as the radial acceleration. Okay. Now, as per the question we are supposed to compare this centripetal acceleration with the acceleration due to gravity. Means we are supposed to get this value. Centripetal acceleration divided by acceleration due to gravity. First and foremost, it is the ratio of two similar physical quantities. Both are acceleration, so the ratio would be a dimensionless quantity, right? So AC is 62.5 and G, it's actually 9.81 or 9.8 meter per second square. But in order to simplify the uh, calculation, I consider G to be 10 meter per second square. So it will be about 6.25. So this is the answer. So the ratio of the centripetal acceleration to the acceleration due to gravity is about 6.25. In case you take the value of small g as 9.8, then the ratio would have been greater than 6.25. It would have been about 6.35, 6.36 like that, right? So this is the answer. So we are over with question number 3 as well. Now let's proceed to question number 4. Question number 4 states that we need to determine actually the angular velocity in SI that is in radian per second of the hour and minute hand of a clock. This is an interesting question. Okay, question number 4. First part is hour hand. First question is, we are supposed to find out the angular speed of our hand. Now look students, in the case of our hand, it's like this. This is a clock. This is 12, this is 6, this is 3 and this is 9. Our hand, right? This is the pointer. Our hand. Now, 
when it completes one complete rotation it will cover angular displacement of 2 pi radian which is equivalent to 360 degree now angular speed you are aware students it is given by 2 pi divided by capital T capital T actually is the time period which is the time taken by the body in this case the hour hand to complete one rotation so 2 pi divided by what is the time taken by the hour hand to complete one rotation it is obviously 12 hours at 12 the hour hand is like this and after 12 hours it will be back into its original position so it is taking 12 hours to complete one rotation I am talking about the hour hand so time period for the hour hand is 12 hours now we are supposed to find out the angular velocity in radian per second so we need to convert this hour into seconds one hour is 60 minutes each minute is one minute is equal to 60 seconds so 12 hour would be 12 into 60 into 60 seconds now this is in radian this is in second so the unit would be in radian per second the unit would be in radian per second so let's solve it so it will give us pi divided by 6 into 60 into 60 so that will give us pi divided by 6 into 3600 radian per second which in turn will give us pi over 21600 and answer would be in radian per second so students this is the answer this is the angular speed of the hour hand pi over 21600 radian per second right so let's consider the second scenario second case we are also supposed to find out the angular velocity of the minute hand of a clock right the case of minute hand here again angular velocity is 2 pi by capital D now considering the minute hand you are aware during one hour which is equal to 60 minutes the minute hand completes one rotation so the time period for the minute hand that is the time taken by the minute hand to complete one rotation would be 60 minutes isn't it so here 2 pi divided by 60 minutes we need to get the answer omega in radian per second so this minute has to be converted to seconds so 60 minute means 60 into 60 seconds so what we get is pi over 30 into 60 it will be in radian per second that will give us pi over 1800 radian per second so that's the angular speed of the minute hand in radian per second right students so we have done both the parts of question number 4 ok now let's concentrate on the last question question number 5 it's again based on centripetal acceleration right a car takes a round turn of radius 50 meter with velocity of 36 km per hour we are supposed to find out the centripetal acceleration of the car now again students I must remind you in the case of uniform circular motion body pauses only centripetal acceleration where the speed remains constant but the direction of motion of the body changes continuously but in the case of non-uniform motion the body causes both centripetal acceleration as well as tangential acceleration the role of centripetal acceleration is to make the body change its direction continuously while the role of tangential acceleration is to increase or decrease the magnitude of the velocity of the body at a constant rate right students so over here only the centripetal acceleration is to be found right so question number 5 this is the master formula a is equal to b square by r it can also be written in terms of angular speed as omega square r right so here radius it's given to be 
50 meter velocity it's given to be 36 kilometer per hour now we have to convert it in a single system isn't it so kilometer per hour it is 5 by 18 meter per second so it will be 36 into 5 by 18 meter per second so it will be equal to 10 meter per second right so we are aware of both the values of r and v so we substitute this value over here and we will be okay with the value of the acceleration centripetal acceleration so it is v square by r so it will be 10 into 10 divided by r is 50 isn't it so what do we get 100 divided by 50 so it will be 2 and SI unit is meter per second square. So this is the answer. And direction, we are always already aware of the direction of centripetal acceleration. Students always remember centripetal acceleration is also known as radial acceleration. So it is always directed radially inwards. So don't forget to mention the direction. So it is directed radially inwards that is its direction is always along the radius towards the center of the circular path which the body follows right so we are over with question number five as well students so i hope uh, you are all convinced while doing these questions what's the concept used in doing these questions right so these are actually very basic questions so students that's it for this particular session do join me in my next lecture then so we are actually over with kinematics portion so in the next lecture we'll start with the new unit of laws of motion right till then bye bye and do take very good care of yourself thank you